we go. All right. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the One Up Sales Development Podcast. For my next guest, I got on for you guys is a uh, true special treat today. It's actually a, I would say, a good colleague friend now. Um, we've been in touch for quite some time. And those who knows, I was actually previously over at 10 Bound with David Delaney, tasked with interviewing SDR and BDR manager. And till this day, till this day, this individual's blog has been my favorite one thus far favorite blog out of the it just got published not sure if you've seen it yet or not in case you do you gotta check it out and she's a female in the sales development game and i'm really happy to bring her on board to come on and share her story here she actually started out her uh, over at sesame communications as a market development rep worked her way up to the ranks to a senior market developer rep to a territory sales manager jumped over to Tipotli. Or now uh, was a strategic sales development rep, now an SDR manager. Please give me a warm welcome for the one and only Danielle Benavides. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry, that Benavides. You said it perfect. Totally Benavides. fine. Benavides? Benavides. Benavides, not Benavides. <laughs> okay, so it's Ben, Na, E. And then you, you know how it's D E S? It's more like a T H, Benavides. Benavides, Benavides, Danielle Benavides. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jackson. Really appreciate you. I think it is insane how long we've stayed in touch. I remember I was in LA with my sister when Shelter in Place happened. And so really good to keep in touch all these months. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, really happy and, um, you know, uh, excited for you to come on and being open to this. I know, uh, like, just based on your conversation when you you know, this was like post-COVID, pre-COVID, when it just started. And then you went in L.A. and that's when we connected. And, again, it's your blog that just keeps on getting me back. And it's like, I, I got to get her on this. I know she's busy, but, like, your blog is just something <laughs> I can't wait to dive deep and have you share it over. But. Welcome to the One Up Sales Development Podcast. Yeah, I know. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So, Diana, this is your show. This is your episode. Um, why don't we go ahead and just dive deep and you know, give, give a brief uh, introduction to our audience of you know, who you are and what do you currently do? Sure, of course. So my name is Danielle and I am a sales development manager here at Tipalti. Tipalti is a global accounts payable platform that helps automate the AP um, system. So all about finance. It's really fun. I really enjoy it. I've been at the company for almost two years now. And uh, originally from Brooklyn, New York, have been on the West Coast for the last five years. And so uh, it's been really good to be a part of a company that has allowed me to grow into the role that I am in today. Nice, nice. So you're originally from Brooklyn, New York. When did you uh, when did you make the, the jump over to West Coast? Uh, in 2015, after college, I moved to Seattle, Washington. I was with Habitat for, Huma for Humanity. So I worked in AmeriCorps, so resource development, where I helped with the communications and events, helping fundraise and working with major donors and sponsors. Nice. That's, that's awesome. Do, do you miss New York? Have you been back? <laughs> I haven't been back recently, but normally I'm there one to two times a year because my mom is still there. Okay, that, that's fair. That's fair. Awesome. All right. So, <laughs> thing out, um, you know, typically when we speak with individuals like yourself, everyone always has a different sales story. They came in through a different background. So, what's your story? How did you get involved in that? Like, what, what was your exposure when it comes to that? Of course. So it definitely takes me back to when I was younger. I was always involved in volunteering, hence joining AmeriCorps for Habitat for Humanity. For those of you that don't know, the way that I like to describe it is AmeriCorps is like the Peace Corps, except for in the United States. So you volunteer yourself for a year for um, an organization that you truly believe in. And so for me, I majored in public relations back at Syracuse University and um, I always thought like I wanted to work for a nonprofit and when I finally did join, uh, you know, I felt like that there was a lot of times where, um, I was just focusing on one event, one organization. And when my 
when my service came to an end, I thought, okay, where can I really take my skills where I can still serve the community, not only with time, but financially. And so I thought, why not sales? I mean, I've been talking to major donors and sponsors. I helped fundraise over $100,000 for Seattle King County alone. And so I thought maybe this would be a really good way to expose myself to uh, continuing to cold call and build relationships, but also find a company that I truly believed in, which started off at Sesame Communications. So that is a dental software. It's a reminder system with social media and SEO. And one thing I truly loved about working with the dentists is learning their story. So a lot of them, sure, they treat patients and more, but they also dedicate their time to low income families and helping them too with their dental hygiene and their healthcare overall. So oh, that's nice. kind of how I jumped in. Um, I was, yes, it's called an MDR market development representative, but it's the same thing as an SDR. So I was one of the first ones hired. I helped build out that team at the time. I didn't really have a sales manager. So the territory sales managers and the VP of sales were those that I really worked with to kind of learn all about sales. And what's really crazy and what's different from you know, two years ago versus now is that, you know, I was the one that was creating my own email cadences without any of the tools that we kind of use here at Topalti. It was more of just using Salesforce, using tasks. And um, oh. <laughs> it, it's just crazy to think about how different it can be when it comes to training and the importance of tools these days as well. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's take a few steps back real quick. All right. This is, this is amazing. I, I, I love this. And <laughs> okay. So what I'm hearing is you originally like to help people. So stepping, stepping back into your habitat, right? You were volunteering and were, it sounded like you were making a lot of code calls to get people to donate. And then you helped a few processes such as like getting a hundred K donations and nothing in terms of compensation for yourself or bonus. Correct. Not at all. I was living on $12,000 for the whole year. I had a, Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> at a second job because I mean he can fully live off of that but um, you know it definitely made me feel grateful for the experience that I had and the people that I worked with honestly it was my yeah. first real full job if you think about it wow wow that that's awesome okay so I'm curious um, did you have any type of experience during that time when you're like you know you're making these calls like wow you know I'm actually making things really happen and but you know i i gotta take care of myself too and then you uh, get like this dilemma and did you did you talk to like a, a good close friend of yours or anyone like that and they're like hey you know you know i think you should really take a stab at this and here's why um i'm just curious coming from your end. oh no uh it wasn't until maybe two three years ago where my family finally was like wow like sales is really what you're passionate about because growing up it really was nonprofit. Like I wanted to be the resource development chief of a, of a nonprofit and more. And so uh, for me, a lot of the times I have had people in the past say like, you should check out marketing or you should check out this. And yeah. I don't always see you in as sales. Like you have such a gentle soul. And I was just like, yes, I do. But that, I don't think that takes away from the hard work that we put into it. And I know sometimes people see salespeople as just, you know, people that often don't tell the truth and more. And I, I personally think uh, <laughs> if you're someone that really cares about the person that you're selling to, you're only going to make the recommendations that you feel would really fit for their needs. So there's been times where I was selling to you dentists and they came in hot saying, hey, I want to buy all of these things that you have to offer. And I would look and do the diagnosis. And I would say, hey, I don't think you need this. And I think that's where I really was able to build their trust because normally a lot of people are like, no, you should sign this. Like, let's do this right now. For me, I'm just like, I think what you're doing is great. We can monitor it and make minor adjustments. And then if you decide that that isn't enough, then we can take a second look at it and see if this is another, um, another tool that we offer that can help you. Nice, 
Nice. You know, they say uh, you can get, any, you can have anything you want in the world. You help others get what they want in the world. Um, famous quote too. Uh, so, and, and when you're just talking about there was Sesame communications, right? Yes. You know, that's, that's like the, one of the number one mistakes too. People come in and they, they think they know what they want, but not, they don't always know. And there's those who take advantage of it, but there's those who make it too. And uh, that's exactly what you did. Um, the, so just to take taking a few another few steps back at Sesame. Um, hang out. So you mentioned, hey, look, I came in. You were one of the very first few hires, and you came up with the email campaigns and cadences. Uh, all you really had was well, pretty much a CRM. It's what we're hearing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> were you just doing manual emails, banging it out, stuff like that during that time? Yeah. So I was calling into dental offices. So I was making fifty plus phone calls a day, just talking to. Oh, to, to nice. I was just like, let me just keep going. This is the way in. Um, and I do think it does vary industry to industry because this is an office that's open. Their line is something you can find on the web. So it was very simple. Whereas like the emails, it's usually not directly to the dentist. Most of the time it's the general email to the receptionist or the office manager. So just having them become your best friend and really telling them why you're calling. There it is. There it is. Too many reps nowadays, um, they try to beat behind a bush and oftentimes that doesn't work. I'm sure you're aware of that too. Uh, so yeah, just, just to confirm too, Sesame Communications, uh, you mentioned they, it's like a reminder um, and letting them know that the appointment's coming up. Is it also when they come inside the office, like they said, hey, we have six rooms, um, you're in room number two, number three, and then you can just pull up like their EHR and stuff. Or, or, is that, or my office. So you're going a little step further, but we did help with the patient form. So for example, you say sometimes you still get from, you're going to a new doctor and they send to you uh, this PDF of not even something that you can type in. <laughs> you have to print it out yourself. <laughs> Once a printer, I definitely don't. I either run to Staples or FedEx or just somewhere that does that, but we helped really streamline um, the process for people who are looking for a dentist and filling out that intake form and making sure that they're just aware of, you know, when they're coming in and what the procedure is. Gotcha, gotcha. So streamlining the process, digitizing, the, digitalizing um, what used to be manual is now like, hey, we can just do it on the web or the app and uh, make, the, make the process that much more efficient and, you know, uh, better ex customer experience, journey experience overall. Yeah, exactly. Nice. nice. All right. So, <clears throat> Diana, let's get to the fun part here. Um, you are an SDR manager right now. You're doing very well. Um, it's even based on the interview previously, too. I, you're a rock star over there. Uh, so, what made you choose to be an SDR manager? Because most of other people would be like, hey, I'd rather be an AE or customer success, but you chose the SDR manager route. Um, why is that? Oh boy. So uh, for me, I would say that I initially applied for Topalti to be an account executive. And at the time I only had a year of selling under my belt. And the sales manager who's now the VP of sales her and I got along and I went through the whole process of meeting so many different managers and account executives. And she came back to me and she said, Hey, we really love you, but uh, you've only done this for a year. We want to set you up for success. Would you be open to being an SDR? And I was living at Seattle at the time. I knew the Bay area is where I wanted to move to next. And so I had a few other offers, but I really felt that they could teach me a lot more than the other companies I was interviewing with. And what I mean by that is when I did my demo, I kept focusing on like pricing and features. And she said, you know, there's always so much more value to that. And that opened my eyes to, <laughs> you know, I work at, I worked at Sesame. Like it is a very like, you know, a uh, short sales cycle. One call drops, just here's the credit card, very simple. Whereas to Palti, you know, we are 
we're just this beast and it's, we do so much more. It's finance. You're talking to CFOs, you're talking to controller CEOs, and you're really helping them automate their AP process and helping reduce that work time for them. And so I felt that I really connected with everyone on the team. And I said, I've been an SDR once. I can do it again. It's not a step backwards. It's a step forwards because I'm going to be at a company that's going to teach me so much more than what I've learned at my previous company. Nice. And uh, so I was a strategic SDR uh, supporting the, you know, the bigger deals and or finding them, I should say. And in the midst of this, we had um, a change. So my director of sales development had left the company. We were, and then we had a new one, Jesse, who's my boss today. And we went from this inbound and all bound, or inbound and outbound, and we went all bound. Uh, but the strategic SDR team remained the same. So that was me and two other of my coworkers. And it was hard, like that transition. And so I went to boss Jesse and my my co my manager, uh, Corey. He's my coworker now because <laughs> that's the our manager. So Shout I gotta, out to Corey. <laughs> Corey is the best. Um, yeah. But yeah, I I felt like those that were new were somewhat struggling, and so I sat down with them and I said, "Hey, uh, you know, I noticed here are some of the things that the team is struggling with, and here are some things that I think that we can work on it together." Nice. And in that moment, Jesse was just like, "This Danielle, I have a feeling she's going to be a manager someday." Whereas for me, I was just saying like, "My team mates here, they're struggling, and I really want to help." and at the time, we had a lot of email cadences focused on like industry. So for me, I, coming from public relations, I started writing emails based on persona and more. And so I told Jesse, like, I'd be more than happy to do a training that kind of teaches the team on how like I have been targeting my, my accounts and how to help them in that way. And within those six months, um, I was still talking to the VP of sales to become an account executive. And at the time I was then reporting to Jesse because I was on the strategic team now with all these changes. I mean, I always was, but there was a shift when it came from inbound and outbound to all bound. And Jesse told me that they were gonna be hiring an SDR manager. And I, was, I had just finished my training to become an AE and I was just like, I've been an AE once before. It's something that I really wanted with Sapalti. Like I was meeting with the VP of sales like once a month. Like I was like, here's what I'm doing. Here's what I'm working on. Anything else I need to focus. And I was just like, I think this gives me a really good opportunity to help the team in a different way. At the time, the team was maybe 12 of us. Today, we have over 30 SDRs. So we were expanding. Damn, powerhouse. I knew that we were, uh, we were expanding and I thought to myself, how cool it would it be to really be someone that is able to coach others to get into sales and get their feet wet and then have them go off onto different departments, whether that's an AE, uh, CSM, whether it's marketing, sales operations, solutions consultants. And Jesse said, I'm so happy you asked me because I really think that you would be a good fit for this position. How about for the next month, I'll have you train the new hires and your replacement. And uh, we'll talk about how it feels onboarding them, what it's like, you know, kind of having many one-on-one -on -one sessions with them. And I just fell in love. Like it was so cool to see someone not know too much about sales or to Palti alone. And within that month already have their own, uh, you know, qualification calls scheduled for themselves or, or the AE and just ramping up quickly and being successful. And I told Jesse, I'm interested in being a part of this opportunity. I spoke to my VP of sales and she was so supportive. She's like, you know, I love you and I know you'll do great uh -huh. as a sales development manager. And she's like, you know, and if later on, if you decide that this isn't the fit for you, then, you know, 
don't be afraid to reach out to me and we could see like what we can do, you know, a year, year and a half from now. And for me, that meant so much because it just meant that there's still so much opportunity within Topalti, even though I chose one path rather than the other. And I work with her today as, you know, I'm an inbound manager, so I help support her team very often. So it's really nice to still be able to be in touch and be involved in a lot of the things that the AEs are doing today as well. Nice, nice. You know, I, I think that's really awesome how you found a company that really looks into the, the best interests of you, of what you're looking for. You know, you told them, hey, you know, I, my end goal is I want to be an AE. But what they saw is you were already showing uh, leadership traits that you've been doing. And that's taking care of the people to the left of you and to the right of you. And, you know, I, I really think you've actually had this in your whole entire heart, uh, the whole entire, entire time ever since you joined um, AmeriCorps for volunteering because you want to help and take care of people. And that's like early trait indicators. And I think that's really awesome how you have the company itself to support you in that way and even say, Daniela, even if it doesn't work out, we still got you. That A route will still be open. Um, do you have any regrets for not taking the AE role? Not at all. I love my job. Um, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that just because we're on, on the record. I don't like that, but. Honestly, you know how a lot of people say I wake up every day and I look forward to my job. Like many people say that it doesn't happen as often, or maybe it's because they haven't found their true passion. Yeah comes Monday, I'm excited. Like Mondays are probably the most productive day because it kind of tells me what's going to be for the team and what to look out for the week, especially because I'm meeting with marketing. I'm, you know, going over the trends with my boss. I'm holding one-on-ones and more. And I look forward to it each day. I've never seen it as like, why did I join this? I love it. I love the team that I'm part of. I I am kind of a revolving door because people on my team are on, under me for a year or less. So it's like I hire people, like a lot of people. It's not just one person at a time. I, I hire in batches of three, of three to five and within six, nine months, I'm like, you did great off to the outbound team. Now it's time to get a new, <laughs> newer nice. club to come in. And so it definitely keeps me on my feet and, um, Topalti too, you know, they invest in their managers and their employees, not only with tools, but we, we have different companies like Life Labs and Braverly that we've used that also helps coach us and, uh, and winning by design as well to help with sales methodologies or how to lead a good, or how to be a good manage, manager and lead a team. So I would definitely say they too helped me be successful, but person mostly is my boss, Jesse. I mean, he always is suggesting books for me to read um, and we kind of talk through things. And when I tell him about a scenario that I have or a situation, he will then say like, all right, let's role play this. And you know, oh, he'll bring nice. the other person and it'll just put me on the spot, but it's a lot allowing me to really use the tools and the resources that I was just taught and using it effectively. Uh, oh, nice. In the role. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to Jesse. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you're, you're a uh, SDR manager. Um, so from what I'm hearing, uh, you take care, you're, you're taking care of the inbound side before they get ready and ramp and then like, Hey, promoting to the outbound. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So I hire people that are either straight out of college or looking for a career change. So I've hired those, I ha I've hired a basketball coach. I've hired those that had a background in nice. finance, people who have, who have their CPA. So I hire people of different diverse backgrounds and I love it because they too teach me stuff as well. Oh my goodness. I, okay. That right there is exactly why I wanted to bring you on your, your personality and traits. You see things beyond the paper. You know, one, one of the biggest trouble um, SDR managers have nowadays and could be companies to itself is you know they they want a cookie cutter resume you know someone just fresh out of college young he's uh, playing sports and like high grades fraternities and all that you know uh, but really they sometimes they they miss it by a mark and it's really just, don't look at the paper you know look at the individual 
talk to them, have that conversation, ask questions. And if it clicks and connects and you truly believe deep down and, and understand that, hey, this can probably work, so just give them a shot. Definitely. I agree. And we've done that to many of those that are on my team now and they're doing phenomenal. So I'm happy that I took the leap, but also that they took a leap on us as well. Yeah, you bet. All right. So yeah, let's dive into this. So sure. your blog, God, <laughs> damn, I love that blog. I still to this day to my uh, favorite and um, even with the company I'm at right now too. Um, you know, I, I, uh, uh, told him like uh, when I saw a few of my buddies like hey dude this is like the top number one block you gotta check this out and you know I referred over to him and he's like wow that's really good too so uh, the, the blog you wrote ready set hire um, how did you come up with this framework uh, you know did you was it something you've just been doing you're just constantly tweaking little by little and this is like the system uh, to just ramp them up uh, to come in hey welcome aboard you're fresh hired Let's get started. So I, I want to get, I want to pick your brain on that. Sure. So for me in the framework and really onboarding those, I would say it has evolved throughout time. Like I have newer SDRs that I had hired in August and they're like, wow, I read your blog and I resonate with it. And I'm just like, well, yeah, you are a hundred percent, which I love those that have relevancy, here, baby. Yeah, but yeah. for those that are, you know, in the job for three, six months, then it kind of evolves to my one-on-ones. Then I actually teach them how to forecast and do storytelling so that I can understand the trends. Because if you think about it as a manager, I'm here to listen and react to them. Uh, but they're the ones that are on the front line. So if they have any issues or anything like that, I need to be able to understand kind of the qualification calls that they're holding, understand why it might not have developed into an opportunity. And if there's a trend, if I need to scale it up to either my boss or to marketing to kind of give them that feedback. So definitely teaching them how to do that has helped me uh, when it comes to forecasting for how my team's going to be doing that month as well. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Let's, I want, I want to piggyback on that. Okay. Sure. Forecasting, team forecasting. What does this look like? Let's, uh, let's say you got a team of five, um inbound reps you know they're qualifying hey man, uh this is uh this is jackson with the pop team i'm calling in regards to your inbound request we catch it a good time forecasting trend what does that look like what do you look for when um they report this type of information to you and um how do you attack it accordingly uh when it comes to bumping up to uh to the top of tier sure so um what that really looks like is telling me like I can look at the numbers all day, but what I'm really looking for is understanding who they might have spoken to and why they might not have gone past off. So uh, for me, I'm always looking into ways for me to read the data. So for example, in Salesforce, we now have uh, in the activity, like the new event meeting held. I also have that once they actually complete the meeting that they can say like meeting complete pass to sales meeting complete not ready. And that not ready part kind of shows me uh, because we're a money licensed business, uh, we're kind of like a bank where there's a lot of KYC and we have a compliance team uh, here at Topalti. And so it could be like failed compliance because maybe they didn't hit that 12 year mark if they're like an online marketplace. Or it could be not ready because, um, you know, um, lack of, Features and what that feature could be is maybe like an integration or like purchase order matching for a certain ERP system that they're using. So it's understanding that. So for me, the way that I would see it is, hey, Danielle, so last week I received uh, 50 leads and within, obviously it's more than that, I should say, but <laughs> can I keep it? Uh, no worries, no worries. Uh, you know, I received 50 leads. My, our marketing team is the best, so shout out to them as well. Um, yeah. I received 50 leads. Uh, I have also broken the lead sources into three different tiers, low intent, mid intent, high intent. So that's another thing that I, oh. probably a little nitty gritty, but by lead source, like low intent could be like webinar and trade show. Mid intent could be search paid. High intent is like website direct, website referral, uh, search organic. 
So I also start off my team when I first hire them on the low to mid intent tier until they're at the company for like three to six months to actually put them in the high intent where they receive the leads that are very hot. So with my team, they'll say like, hey, I received these amount of leads. A few of them were low intent, some of them were high intent, mid intent. Out of that, I was able to get, um, you know, 10 qualification calls. Out of the 10, only seven were past the sales with the development opportunity. Okay, perfect. For those other four that didn't get past the sales, can you tell me more about that? Yep, one of them, uh, you know, I'm waiting on to hear uh, what day and time that they're available, or this person uh, was looking for account receivables, not account payables. Just certain things like that to understand who are they talking to, how do they overcome those objections, and then telling me, okay, so out of the seven that you passed, which ones do you think are, you know, the ones that are highly likely are going to go to the next step in the sales cycle with the account executive? And so understanding yeah. that can allow me to then go to marketing and saying like, hey, uh, I've noticed that we're getting a lot of business service industries coming in from all these different areas. And I see that they're that they're doing really well and be getting qualified. So that also tells marketing, like, you know, we are focusing our money, our time and our efforts in the right uh, industry or, you know, the right uh, partnerships that we have. So that helps us also understand the trends of seeing like what we can do to help support the team as well. Cause it's also seasonal nice. if you think about it as well. Nice, nice, nice. Wow, that's very, very, very tactical. Uh, so I know you, I know you mentioned that you know you report to uh, Jess, Jesse. Uh, yes. For you going to marketing and just collaborating it uh, to build a common understanding across the board, <clears throat> was this something that was best practice that they've been doing, or is this something that you figured out the bat and said, "Hey, this is a team effort. We should really uh, collaborate with each other." and you just did it uh, based on your expertise? Sure, so I would say marketing always works hand in hand with sales, both with the AEs and the SDRs and the customer success team as well. I think uh, the difference, or at least for me, uh, the reason why Jesse uh, had in mind for me to become the inbound manager is because I always pay a lot of attention to detail but even before I was a manager, I was always reaching out to marketing and saying like, hey, what events do you have? And then creating my own email cadences and then sharing it with the team. Ah, there it, there it I, is, there it is. Okay. So, um, I think for us, we've always had a relationship with them, but sometimes if we have a specific campaign and let's say our CMO says like, hey, I want, uh, I want you to focus on uh, this ERP system and this persona, I will write it out. But then I do have marketing, like the campaigns manager and ever like uh, demands gen and account based that will all come together and they'll look at what I wrote and then just give me like a little bit of feedback and then I will put it into the email cadence. And then whenever that campaign or event happens, I'll then tell my team, hey, you can find this in our uh, group which is a tool that we currently use and you can find it and you can send it off to your open leads and contacts. So we've always wow. had a relationship. I would say this is probably the best relationship we've, I've ever experienced. And I know a lot of people in our company say that because we really work hand in hand. And if you have an idea, they are willing to try that with you nice. and then, you know, take it from there. Wow. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I want to stop at this because, um, that's a huge problem too when it comes to the sales dev community. Uh, really, marketing and sales normally they <laughs> they don't really go they don't really go hand in hand like how you guys have it at Tapatati. So I thought that was very very nice and awesome. You know, you guys work hand in hand. You go to them and say, "Hey, look, this is what I'm currently seeing. Here's the response, <clears throat> and here's the KPIs to prove it." And then they would adjust accordingly, or you would go and create your campaign based off uh, what you believe uh, would be the right approach. And then they would give you constant feedback and be like, hey, you should adjust this word to this. You should uh, tweak this to that. And now it becomes a full tactic because normally where we see, and it's very, very common still to today, like marketing would be like, ah, you know, I, this is my, don't tell me how to do my job. 
they throw something over the fence and tell the SDR BDRs go and get it. And the SDR and BDR reach out to him. It's like, hey, this the message is irrelevant. <laughs> I honestly think it's about preparation. You know, uh, it's all about teamwork, preparation. For me, for my team, because we're inbound and they get a lot of events and trade shows, it's also giving them the heads up. Hey, team. We're having a Finance Elevate event this upcoming week, so please be prepared for that. And then I've created a Slack channel where I'll send it to all the SDRs. Hey, you're going to be receiving leads today. They'll be dropping into your queue, you know, at noon. Here's the emails that uh, we've created, and here is where you can find more about the event. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And that's nice. just how that is, yeah. Nice. Okay, so then, you know, uh, just, just before we get, um, towards the end here. Uh, so if there's like an SDR and BDR manager out there and they kind of want to start collaborating with marketing like how you did, um, what are a few tips you can give them to, uh, you know, open the conversation or build that type of relationship? Uh, because it really is an internal roadblock for a lot of sales development, um, tech and SaaS company nowadays, um, especially with the, uh, you know, like the one who's like come a little tenure, just got funded. Um, it's, just, it's just all over the place. In my experience yeah i would say the best thing to do is befriend the the person that is creating those campaigns or those events and saying like hey i know that we are creating this i have an idea can we collaborate with one another but it shouldn't just be that you go in with no agenda have an agenda talk to them about what it is that you're thinking maybe even have like a sample text as well and then go from there. So for example, with Tupalti, even though we're receiving the leads, our marketing team is also sending out their own emails for those that may have attended mm. an event. The difference is it's more personalized on our side. So it's just breaking that up and you know, recognizing that um, I do think that there is a difference between the way marketing approaches stuff and the way uh, sales approaches things. So like marketing is all content, 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 content. And sales, we're about the content as well, but shortening it so sweet that you probably get the same email that marketing sent out in one in, and breaking it up into two, three, maybe even four different emails on the sales side. So it's just making it very digestible, approachable, always focusing on them first and then us so just thinking of it that way and and if marketing says like hey you know i don't have time for this then you make time this is your team so you know you the ball's in your court don't be afraid to try something new and if it doesn't work the first time you know if you are using a email cadence tool analyze it see which ones got the most openings ones that got the most replies and then try again sometimes it can also just be the season maybe just not the right time maybe it's maybe we're targeting the wrong person as well it could be a blend of things and the way that you really can understand that is behind the data and also just uh you know talking to your team and saying like hey you know we tried this what happens and that happens i create campaigns for my team all the time and someone will be like yes that got me six meetings uh you know on the books for this past month and someone will be like yeah that didn't work for me and i'm just like okay well i've got another campaign coming up next week for you to try so hopefully that will help said but you know it, it depends on you know you know right person right time you know, it could be the right person, wrong time. And that's okay too. You can try again. Use these campaigns maybe once a quarter. Don't don't mass blast people. Be strategic in regards to it. Nice, 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 nice. If that wasn't the price of admission right there, I don't know what is. You know, I, I that very tactical of you, you know, and working hand by hand with your reps to, hey, you know, this campaign's not really working. Or, hey, this one booked me for several meetings. You know, uh, scrape, track, measure, rinse, repeat, track, track, measure, repeat. Yes. Oh, all right. Anyway, always. Yeah. If it is one quarter, you know, like to Palti, we're always coming up with new products, new integrations. So a campaign could say like, oh, yeah, we're coming to the end of the year. And let's say it's 
January, you know, use it, but make those small edits, make those adjustments of things that we now do integrate with. So always before you send it out, look at what it says, make those minor adjustments. And also add your own personality to it too. Doesn't hurt. <laughs> oh, you got it. You know, that's, 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 a, that's another common mistake we often see with new reps too, right? Like they, they, they're, they're so into it that they forgot who they are. And all of a sudden now they're a robot because they're worried too much with that negative thoughts. Um, <laughs> man. But yeah, uh, so just before we wrap this up, I got to ask you this question. Sure. So SDR managers out there and, you know, there's a lot of companies, tech and SaaS company, right? They said, hey, look, there's a buzzword going on. We are, are you know, we're not getting the leads that we want in terms of inbound for marketing. We, we're going to roll out a sales development team. And typically what normally happens is they go, all right, you know what, you're gonna, they're gonna report to the VP of sales, guy's been in the game for 25 years and he, he knows nothing about sales development, you know, and then they wanna bring on like an SDR manager and then they wanna start building out a process. And then sometimes the company goes, screw that, we don't wanna look for other people from outside to consult and show us how to do it. We, we could just build it ourselves. And typically when that happens, when they take that road, which is a formula for a disaster coming up, um, what happened is they go, all right, we're going to build a team. Let's say we're bringing on like five, five inbound SDR. They get, all right, here's the process. Day one, you're going to learn about what the company does. Day two, we're going to start role-playing code calls. And then they like next week, we're going to get you live. And what happens normally when that happens, there's just too, it's too fast. And it's just, they throw them on the field. It's like, it's like, they're, they're, it's like they're, they're throw, they throw them in the woods with, um, with nothing in general, and then they get eaten up by the wolves. And the team typically runs out one by one rather than collaborating, working together. So my question to you is, I want to pick your brain philosophy. Let's say they bring you on a brand new company. Uh, Danielle, we want you to be the SDR manager. Uh, what is your philosophy and beliefs to help the individual ramp up quickly in a timely fashion that's highly effective and that works? Like, Give it to us. Sure. So for me, the way that I see it is what have they been doing? So it's looking at the marketing, the leads that we receive. And is there email campaigns do we have? Do we have call scripts? For me, uh, kind of how I mentioned, I create a whole SDR playbook for my team that is specific for the inbound. And that includes how to hold a cold call, how to overcome an objection, how to create an opportunity, um, how to qualify people over email. Here are the email cadences you can use. And I also have like an inbound SCR FAQ sheet of uh, many common questions that my SCRs have asked me that they can refer to. So for me, I think first you really have to recognize, do they know how to use the tools? Are they just learning sales? Or are they also learning the product? Because you can have an uh, SDR come in and they could have lots of experience in sales and it might not be the same sales that we're doing now at like a SaaS company. It could be, you know, uh, winery sales or anything like that, which they can bring their, their jazz to it. But it's really understanding like, okay, who are you looking to hire? Like, what is their personality type? What are you looking for? But it's also saying if at the two weeks they're not ready to be okay with that. I have put oh my God. within two weeks and I've also said, I'm going to give you another extra week because I don't think you're ready and I want you to feel as confident as I do in you. So why don't we see where those gaps are and help fill it? So uh, with, nice. and I know you said to imagine a different company, but like with Tapalti, we're growing. Uh, we've just got a sales enablement team about a year ago, but even then, like we just got an SDR, uh, sales enablement person for us as well. But prior to that, it was Jesse, Corey, and I coming together and thinking, okay, how do we onboard them? How do we break it down? Especially I say this often, but like, Finance isn't easy. And you need to also be able to understand who you're speaking to and don't use their jargon just because you think that that will make them think that you understand them. Stick to what you know. 
So for me, you know, we focus first like on HR. It's like, welcome, here's the HR, here's about uh, to Palti, they normally don't really ever see anything that they do until the second week. So the first week is more like company related, meet the CEO, CRO, CMO, everyone else. Oh, wow. Who we target, uh, learn what our product is, listen to these demos. Uh, we use Mind Tickle, where it's kind of like you sit in on webinars and then you take tests. So you're doing that and then also just having different trainings. So kind of how I mentioned, like for me, for my team, when people say like, Ah, no worries. So we got disconnected, but no worries. Um, I should hop back down in a few moments. It's a great conversation, by the way. Danielle, you are awesome. Fantastic. Welcome back. <laughs> hey. Welcome back. No worries. Don't worry about it. It, it happens from time to time, but welcome back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where you're off. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we're speaking about your your process um, over at Tapati. Uh, oh yes, first week just just learning about a company, and then second week. Yeah, first week learning about the company, and then uh, and then you're still learning about the company. But second week, I actually expose you to what you do on my team. We also have, uh, we use Excalibur where it's like you watch webinars and you also record yourself like pitching to Paul T and you take tests. You also have the trainings with me. So I have like high impact coach trainings where I will ask them to bring in a chorus call. So this is kind of similar to kind of the, bro the blog that I had written, yeah. but having them coach each other and give each other feedback. Then we have Tuesday weekly meetings where it's just focused on one subject as well and that is usually led by either a special guest Corey Spencer Jesse any of us as well and that could be like uh, you know overcoming a, an objection or um, how to write an email just different things like that as well so I would say the training should never just end right then and there it should be ongoing but also understanding um, you know once you do have everyone on your team making sure that you are uh, designating time for those that are new and those who have been on your team and splitting that so that they know where to spend their own time and they're not just sitting in a meeting on something they already know. My goodness, my goodness. You know, a lot of uh, SDR managers too, um, they want things too fast and that's often the mistake too. And I really truly believe in the approach that you're taking and I think that's I think that's highly tactical too because one of the biggest mistakes, well, one of the the main need really it's um continuous coaching and learning. That's all it really is, you know. Hey, Daniela, how'd you do last week? Hey, what kind of objections did you have? Well, here comes the rope puck. You know, you 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 know you know the agenda. Here comes the game. Come in hot, hit me with it, and then really just getting them to break out that shell and go. All right, Daniela. I came across three objections and I'm going to hit you with this uh, during our one-on-ones. And once they get that feeling opened up, there comes that trust. And then it just starts to roll up and evolve. That That's right there. It's on point. So, uh, the, the, I just want to go ahead and um, ask you just one, one, one more final question just before we, we close it up here. So, um, let's say 
brand new rep. Hey, I'm 22, 23, just graduated. Uh, got the con, uh, got the offer letter. Uh, sign on, you know, uh, starting out as SDR and BDR. What kind of advice do you have for them to be, you know, super effective and be the best they can in terms of their own version? The way that I see it is don't be afraid to try something new and don't be afraid to ask for help. So the way that oh, I God. say that, and I'm sure everyone always says that, but one, um, you know, when it comes to trying new things, it doesn't mean uh, do everything else that everyone else is doing. If you want to try and send a vidyard or if you want to go send a gift, a Sendoso, a $10 uh, gift card to Starbucks, then do that. Try it. Target the people that, uh, you know, maybe that, you know, would be a good fit, but just haven't really been giving you the time of day. When I was at Tipalti, I did that. I worked with my marketing team. We're trying out this, uh, this new system that's similar to Vidyard. And I was just like, yeah, I'll be your guinea pig. I would love to sit in a room and create this video and see where it goes. And uh, the first time it, it didn't work, but then we did it again and we added cool effects and it was a hit. And nice. it was just, trying something different. And when I say ask for help, that means meet the people that you're working with, but also people who are outside of your current day to day. So when my team comes to me and they say, Hey, Danielle, I need help. And this is like what I'm looking to learn. It's not always that I'm directing them to everyone that's on my team, but it could be the outbound team. It could be someone that's an AE. It could be a manager that I know is doing really good at something. And it's, or it's just say like, Oh, you want to uh, send like a gift card okay, why don't you meet with Peter for marketing and talk to him about that? And why don't you come to me next week, what you came up with, or what do you have in mind? Why don't we talk through that? You know, why do you want to send that to them? Do you think that they'll respond? Like, what do you see in them as well? So I think it's that it's taking initiative, but also knowing that um, it's not about finding the light at the end of the tunnel, but, but being that light while you're going through the tunnel, because being oh. an SEO, it's so hard. You have to find your own motivation, but just know that you're not alone. Um, and I think for my team to you, I'm always talking to them, checking in. It's not just how are you doing at work, but like, how are you doing? How is it? How is it being transitioning, working from home? How is your family? How is your mental health? Is there anything that I can do for you to support you? So, you know, I do encourage my team to take off and uh, you know, this month too, I said, Hey, you know, it's Q4, uh, you know, everyone's grinding, grinding, grinding away. And I know that you're doing that. And I see that if you want to take a day off, go ahead and do it. I will cover your leads for you. Oh Just my God. Cause I think in it being an SCR, your leads is everything that is your cue. And so for me, I'm just like, I will cover that for you. Or if there's like a family emergency, anything that I can do, it's about supporting them and helping them and knowing that I want them to be successful as well. And they're not alone. And when I say that we're in this together, I'm not just talking about me. Their team has their back. My boss has their back. Like we're all there together. And I think that's one thing about Topalti that I truly do love is that it is about teamwork and you see it the minute like you enter. The building and for those that i have hired remotely they too are like oh my gosh everyone's so helpful you know when we say hey we're here to help just reach out even if it's for 10 minutes we will give you that time of day because you are a part of us and you are part of that topalti family and if you don't succeed we don't succeed so we're in this together Woo! <laughs> oh my god that was amazing don't look for the light, be the light. You know, if you don't succeed, we don't succeed. I think that's like one of the best and easiest way to put, to put it. Um, man, you know, I make everyone who's just started over as uh, SDR, BDR, I just want to say that they're truly lucky to have you, Daniela, and I mean it sincerely. You know, there's a lot of people out there, myself included, when I first started my journey, I didn't have like an SDR being our manager like you. I wish I did, but hats off to you. Kudos to you. Please keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, I, the Tipali is truly, really lucky to have you. 
Um, so just to wrap that up there, and I mean that sincerely. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know we took it way more than time than we expected. Uh, truly, we're truly grateful and thankful that the sales dev community appreciates you. Um, what's the best way to reach out to you? And if there's anything that you and anyone you want to give a shout out to, please do so. Sure, of course. So best way to reach out to me is LinkedIn or email. <laughs> probably LinkedIn because I, I, I feel like you'll probably just send me a message. But uh, Danielle Benavides at Tapalti, uh, that's where I work. Um, if you ever need any advice or anything like that, more than happy to do so. Uh, you know, I, I truly do think even for those that um, I have phone calls with that are interested in Paul team who might not be hiring at that time. I still keep in touch with them and I share some of the methodologies that we use and I check in. Um, but most of the time we're hiring quite often. So if you are an SCR or looking to get into it, you know, it's about to be a new year as well. And uh, we have a great team for expanding. Like I said, we have 30 SCRs. It's going to be expanding. We're located in the Bay Area. In San Mateo, we're located in Vancouver, Canada, Israel, and we're looking to continue to expand. But for shout outs, I would definitely say my boss, Jesse, um, he is the one who truly believed in me and saw that uh, I had potential in being a manager, but he has definitely helped guide me. And then also my friends and family and my mentors that I've had, um, they may not always understand sales, but they've always still given me insight on how to approach certain things and believe in me. So definitely give a shout out to them as well. All right. There it is. And uh, Danielle, SDR manager at Poly, thanks again for having me on the 1UP Sales Development Podcast. We truly appreciate you. Thank you. Have a good one.